Welcome back to Anderton's TV. Hola. I assume Hola. that you, lucky person, got some sort of electric guitar starter pack, either for Christmas or your birthday or some other reason. Perhaps somebody just liked you a lot. Um, so I thought what we'd do is take five or 10 minutes just to quickly go through how do you plug it into your guitar amplifier? How do you set your guitar amp to get a little clean sound or a distortion sound? Mm -hmm. How do you use a clip on tuner? Maybe you're gonna bust a string and we need to know how you tune that. Maybe somebody bought you a pedal and you're Maybe. going, what do I do with this? Uh, so that's kind of it. It's very yeah. much a kind of like a my first video. There is, before we get started, a slightly more in-depth video up there now of kind of like guitar maintenance tips that you might want to do yeah. to a new guitar, yeah. which is worth watching. But Absolutely. for now, Mr. Pete. Yes, Mr. Lee. Would you like to be my glamorous assistant I and would hold love this to. guitar? I would lo love You're nothing very but. kind. Uh, I should say for now, what you uh, you do not need a glamorous assistant to learn to play the guitar. Oh, do you? <laughs> but do it you? certainly helps. A band. Um, right, so this is a, an East Coast starter pack that we sell at Christmas. Comes with a, a guitar that looks a little bit like a Fender Strat kind of thing, and it comes with a little 15 watt amplifier. So maybe you've got something similar. Maybe you've got this exact same pack. So I've plugged the guitar amp into the mains. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm now giving Mr. Pete a guitar cable. Yes, thank you very much. Any old guitar cable to be honest. These are, we sometimes call these quarter inch jacks or guitar cables or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's no right or wrong way around for a cable to go. One end goes in the guitar, one in the amp, doesn't matter which. You can see ours have uh, yes, seen been a bit of action. Yeah. Uh, pop the amp on. You might want to just make sure your volume is turned down yeah. before you turn it on, because you know, it's yeah. all on 10. Perhaps you've got an annoying little brother that turns everything up to 10 <laughs> when you leave the room. Or sister. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. So we, now on this particular amplifier, uh, we've got a couple of sounds. We've got a clean sound and a distortion sound. I'm mm -hmm. going to show you how both those work. But the first thing we need to do is tune. Yes. So is our, your guitar, if you've just bought it from a store or you know, maybe you bought it mail order or on the internet, whatever, probably hasn't arrived in tune, uh, but it should be strung. So that, that's how all our guitars, they'll be yep. strung and they might be a little bit in tune, but they're not gonna be really in tune. So give us a, give us a chord, Mr. Pete, and, let's and we'll try just it. see how it sounds out of tune. Oh dear. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely not in tune. Not in tune. No. Okay. Yeah, we like to tune that. Now, if you bought a pack from Anderton's, uh, you would have got a little clip on tuner attached. Mm -hmm. um, tuners come in all shapes and sizes. In the last few years, I think the ones that clip onto the headstock have been the most popular, but yep. sometimes tuners come in little pedal formats that you plug your guitar into. Some of you may even have an old tuning fork, but hey. Now, normally, let's just show people how you would normally clip that to the headstock. Normally? You would do it like this, so you are able to see it this way. But yes, we're going to put it on the other way around, just so that you can see in the camera yeah. what we're looking for. I guess you can do that as well. It's you know, not, but I'm so yeah, you, you'd you'd rotate the actual bit with the screen so that you can see it. But yep. again, obviously, we're not doing that in this particular video. And switch it on. Now we're going to have to zoom in super super close. Now this is what's called a um, an automatic tuner. Uh, which means you don't have to tell it which note you're going to try and um, tune. It will automatically detect the nearest note to that. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully you guys have, and girls have got a, a book or a, a YouTube series that you're going to follow to learn to play. But we want to tune this to E, A, D, G, B, E across the top there. So we're going to start with the thickest one. Just going to switch that around so you can see it. So it's the right way for you guys out there. Great, okay, go. so that's our E string, which is what we uh -huh. want. Now, you can see just above the E is a little kind of needle on the LCD screen. If it's above that center green mark, mm -hmm. it means that the string is slightly sharp, so we need to detune it a little bit. And if it's below it, it means the string is slightly flat, so we need to increase the tuning. So yeah. Pete will now go through our six strings and tune us up. Yes, uh, quick little tip here. Let's play the string, pluck the string, and let it ring. You can see I'm turning it up. Because I find that if you do that, the tuner can get slightly confused. So if you just let the string ring out. Now whilst Pete is doing that, again, if you've got 
what's called an automatic tuner. So that's where it's gonna already works out the note you're trying to tune to. If you're miles away from the note that you need to be at, say you're tuning your E string and it's very, very flat, it might come up, for example, and say it thinks it's a D string. So what you'd have to do is keep tuning up past D, well, past D sharp, yeah. D sharp or E flat, so until sure it that. gets to the E, and then you know you've got to tune from there. Well, would you like me to show that? Sure. Yeah, so let's take the A string. If I there you go. Tune it down, now it so now it's a G sharp. A... Yeah. So, you know you need to... These are handy tuners to have because, you know, once you get slightly more into the guitar, you may decide that actually you don't want to tune to, you know, E, A, D, G, B, E. You mm. might want some different tunings and yeah. of course you can do that with the tuner. Absolutely. So let's see. Perfect. You now you can leave the clip on tuner on the guitar mm -hmm. all the time if you want yep. to or take it off. It's entirely up to you. So. If, depending on the guitar design and the style that you've gone for, yeah. you might have a, uh, a selector down here, you might have a selector up here, but as long yes. as you've got a combination of pickups on your guitar, you'll have a selector that lets you choose which pickup you want, and you might have uh, controls for volume and tone. This is where you can just have fun experimenting because there's no real right or wrong here. No. Um, typically, if the pickup is nearer the neck, it'll be a, a big warm sounding pickup. Mm -hmm. And if it's nearer the bridge, it'll be a brighter sound. And that's, it's entirely up to you to choose what you yeah, like. Yeah. Um, most okay. guitar players will just run with the volume and tone all the way up all the time. That's the sort of standard default position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Going over to the amplifier now, perhaps we can have a close up here. Mm -hmm. This is fairly typical of a, a sort of an entry level, you know, guitar amp that we all start on. Um, this has a little effect on it called reverb that not all of these amps will have, but mm -hmm. again, I'll talk about that in a minute. So our clean sound uh, is normally that's, if you've got a, a button here for something called gain or overdrive, with that switched off, that's what we'd refer to as our clean sound. So mm -hmm. you can kind of hear, that's like the natural sound of an electric guitar. Perfect. And the volume control on your amplifier will simply adjust how loud that is. Uh, so again, the, the smallest amps will be, you know, the lowest setting, sorry, will be sort of barely audible and the highest setting will be, yes. I imagine, reasonably unpleasant. <laughs> so, <laughs> For the neighbours. Um, yeah. Now, if you've got an amp with something called a drive or an overdrive setting, put that in. Mm -hmm. And again, most amps will have a control called gain and a control called volume. And gain is the word that we use to describe, describe how much overdrive or distortion there is on, on the signal. Yes. So if I have the gain fairly low, and again, it usually works, you still find your volume control will work as well. If we have the gain fairly low, it'll be like a mild... Um, sort of gain, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can hear that kind yeah. of bluesy uh, yeah. tone. Uh, as, we, as we wind the gain up a little bit more, we'll just get more overdrive. Mm -hmm. And that's when this pickup comes in, you're in the brighter, click down here. Sorry, uh, can't help ma it. Maximum <laughs> gain, you're into hopefully some mm. sort of metal. Like that. Something and again, like that. you just leave that wherever you want, and then you can use the button to switch between your two sounds. Mm. Treble, middle and bass, again, it's doing exactly the same as what it might do on a hi-fi or something like that. You're just adjusting the tone. And again, there's no right or wrong with that. You just simply dial that up until you get a sound that you like. Some amps might just have a single control on it called a tone control. Mm -hmm. The more you turn it up, the brighter it gets. The more you turn it down, the darker it gets. Now, reverb is, uh, any guitar player will tell you, it's one of our favorite, favorite effects. If we take reverb off of this amplifier, and if you have got an amplifier with no reverb built into it, mm -hmm. then sad face. Uh, <laughs> it's, um, it's just a nice to have, but this is what it sounds yeah. like with no reverb. Okay. So it's, it's as soon little... as the note stops, it's that's it. Yeah. There's no sense that you're, you've got any of that kind of spatial kind of echo sound. It's fine if you're... If you're... If you're doing that, it's fine. Exactly. You know, it, it... Um, 
And then as soon as you introduce some reverb, all of a sudden it sounds like you're playing in a cathedral or something like that, uh, you know. Royal Albert Hall. Yeah. That's when you go. That's lesson number two. Uh, <laughs> if you go mad with all the reverb again, you're into almost that kind of surfy sort of uh, sound of the 60s, but. <laughs> There's no right or wrong with where you set the reverb. It's just a taste. So that's a little kind of guide to, to most that. amplifiers. Yeah. We have a headphone socket on here. Uh, any regular headphones go in and then it cuts the speaker out. Yeah. Um, so you can stay, stay up and play all night long. Again, this is pretty basic, this amplifier. As you go up through the range, you might find amps with more features, but this is, mm. this is what we all typically learn to play on. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, only a couple more things that we really want to show you in this video, again, as I said right at the beginning, for sort of more sort of maintenance tips, we'll put the link up there again, there's another sort of more in-depth video. I guess the first and worst thing that's likely to happen to you uh, on Christmas Day is you break a string. Oh, bummer, all yeah. right? And typically speaking, unless you've bought an extra set when you bought the guitar, you don't get spares with the guitar. No. Maybe you've made a mistake while you're tuning. We've all done it. You've tuned, you oh, keep tune tuning it, keep up tuning or whatever, it. and then eventually it snaps, all right? And the so what we're face. now gonna do is, we're just gonna show you how to change uh, one of the strings on the guitar. So mm -hmm. we're gonna assume you've just broken one string rather than you wanna change a whole set. Yep. Actually changing a whole set is pretty much the same thing, just yep. six times over, right? So set of strings, again, uh, we always say a thank you to Ernie Ball because they're really good to us on our channel and they yep. help us out with free strings. There's lots of great brands of strings, uh, but we like Ernie Ball. Absolutely. Um, typically speaking, you're going to see a set of numbers on a, on a packet of strings. This one here, actually, I've picked out is going from 10, 13, 17, 26, 36, 46. And that's the thickness of the strings mm -hmm. that are on the guitar. And as you get more familiar with playing the guitar, you'll end up with a favorite set. You might like them skinny, you might like them heavy, you might like a, a mix. Yeah, um, lots to choose from. 99.9% .9 of beginner guitars will come with a set where the thinnest number will be a nine and the thickest number will yep. be a 42. Call the pink a pack. 42 set. Yeah, in no, Ernie no, no, Ball, no, no, that's no. the super slinkies. Yeah. Really cool set of strings. So we're gonna basically just snip the uh, top E string on this, show you how to take it out of this end, show you how to take it out the other end, and then we're gonna show you how you put another one on. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do this on the table with the overhead cam, so it's nice and easy. Here we go, yeah. I'm going to simulate breaking a string. Ah! Ugh. Okay, so imagine that, it's just snapped. Oh. Now, uh, Careful, this, it's you don't pretty put... mechanical here and not terribly complicated. So we're gonna have a bunch of the string still wrapped around the machine head at mm. this end, and all we gotta do is just Unwind that yeah. and throw Be it away. Be very careful you don't. Oh yes, it's very painful. That hurts. Yeah. I'm just winding it. Everybody up. will do it at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. down at Pete's end, yeah. he's going to have to flip this over. So I'll find the the string as it is here. He might attach itself to the to the uh, magnet pole, but that doesn't matter. So the string basically goes through here, comes out on the other side. Let's see if we can get the. So we'll hold it like this, and then it comes through here, and I'll just pull it out like that. Take it, be very careful, I don't... Can we just get a close up? You know which end is which on a guitar string because one end has a ball one. on it uh, and the other end doesn't. And it's the ball that lodges in the back of the bridge here and stops the string from coming through. The Ernie through. ball. The Ernie ball, absolutely. Yeah. So get rid of your old strings, don't leave them lying around. No. Dispose of them appropriately. Okay, another string comes wound in a packet. Mm -hmm. So first thing we've got to do is just unwind it. Okay. Now we're going to thread it, in fact Pete's going to do that, he's going to thread it through yep. with the, the, the end without the ball on it first. Can you see it here? Let's, in the same hole that. that it came out of. Yeah, I'm um, just going to lean in. Alright, so I'm putting it through here and then I'm just going to grab it on the other side. I'm going to pull it through here. I'm going to flick it back down. Give it a bit of a wiggle, because it, sometimes can, yeah. it can get stuck in, you, you know. See, that's, that's definitely in perfect. there. Perfect. So, so that's it. Let me move that. 
Oh, that's a good idea. So we're threading out this end. Okay, mm -hmm. at this stage, I'm not too worried about getting it in the uh, this little groove on um, this this white bit of the guitar here is called the nuts. There's a little groove on there for each string. There's also on this guitar a little this piece here is called a string tree. I'm not too worried about um, sitting these under the string tree or through the nut just yet. I only need to make sure I'm doing that as I'm tuning it. Mm -hmm. Um, what I do need to do though, and this is really important, and I see this done wrong a lot, I do need to make sure that I'm stringing the um, string through the machine head so it's coming up on the kind of outside, if you want to say that, of the string, but you can kind of see it here, yeah. and it's and it's going to go around that way. What I don't yeah. want to do, hopefully again you can see this, what I don't want to do is go around that way and then yeah. that way. Right? Underneath. Does that make sense? Yeah, underneath. Okay, right. so what I am going to do first, I'm just going to adjust the tuning key. Mm. What I want is the hole in the machine head to be kind of going down at an angle so that as soon as I put the string through and then give it a bit of a kink, it's kind of sort of got a grip. Now, different people will have a preference as to how much of the string am I going to want to wind round. Typically, on the thinner strings, you want to get probably two or three winds, maybe three or four winds. And then on the thicker strings, you only really need one or two winds yeah, to go much. around. Not much. Right. So a little bit of trial and error, because again, different guitars will have um, the tuners at different positions relative mm -hmm. to the length of the string. But I kind of feel like you've got about that much, you know, so what is that, about five or six inches off of the fretboard maybe. <sighs> uh, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a kink in the string. Good band. All right. So yeah. So now kind of like as I start to wind this up now I tell you what I do have here yeah. is a yield fashioned mechanical string winder and again best. these are about I don't know less than a fiver from a guitar store yeah. maybe even less you than that. You could buy kits as well. Can't you? Like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start winding. All right now I've been told in my life that you always want the string to wind down the machine head. Yes. More recently somebody on a Gibson forum posted that yeah. actually only the G Maybe string, on the G though, string right? you shouldn't, yeah. but that's very much Gibson guitar. So I'm winding and I'm winding. Now, as I've started to get the tension, you see I just kept my thumb on it to stop the string kind of mm -hmm. pinging out. Mm -hmm. I will just, as it gets to sort of, you know, it's still very, very loose here, but as it gets to sort of tension, I'm just going to make sure it's sat in the nut and sat underneath the string tree if we've got one of those. And... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That is everything I need to do. Now, yeah. all I'm going to do is just snip uh, the excess string off and... We are good to go. We are good to go. Uh, what you will always find with a brand new set of strings is um, they, they have a little bit of stretch in them. Yeah. So Pete might just show us now a kind of a, a little handy tip. Could for... I buy a tuner, please? Of course you may. I will need a tuner. Uh, yes. So I'm just going to put your this... coffee or mine? That's my That's coffee, yours. That's yours. Coffee is also um, really useful while string stringing a guitar, yeah. especially in an Anderton's mug. Now, I'm just going to, before I put the tune on, because the E string, the two outer strings, so the thickest one and the thinnest ones of the same string, um, same, it's, just, you know, it's the same note, uh, just one is just higher than the other. So I know those two are going to ring the same, but because you said they stretch a lot, um, personally, I tend not to stretch unless I'm in a real hurry, mm -hmm. because I want my strings to last as long as possible. And I find if you just stretch a little bit here, because this is where the, where you got the little ball and the string is wrapped around that. And so it has some, it, it needs to sort of- a Little stretch, yeah. It needs to stretch into, into itself. And the same around the string tree where you've wound the, the, the string around, that needs to settle in as well. So that's where you really need, you don't need it as much in the middle here, you know. So I'll just tend to, have a listen to this here. But if I pull a little bit on this, it's, it's gone down. Slightly flat, isn't it's it? It's gone slightly flat. So I'll can we just see what you're the... doing again there, because it wasn't yeah. very apparent. So what I'm doing, so if you can, if you can catch that on the camera here, I'm literally just pulling away that, from the body, yeah. away from the body, down by the as far back as I can get, basically. A little bit there, and then I go up here, and I'll do the same thing up here. Make sure it sort of stays in position. Isn't that funny? Because I do the whole string. You you but so you're, you're, you do you do this bit. Yeah. Right. You can do that too, but I find especially on the on on the wound strings, that's where all the grease from the fingers gets in as you play, and it is a, the string is a, essentially a, a a metal string 
wound with metal around it. So what happens when you stretch it, you know, you stretch all these little metal windings apart and that allows dirt to get in, finger grease that's or what whatever. Makes your and go. that's what makes the, the strings dull. So if you only, uh, and that'll settle in eventually. So it's just, you know, you, you can experiment as you, as you like with it, but I tend to just, if I'm not in a hurry, as I say, yeah. if, if I'm in a hurry, I might how stretch it. How much has that detuned by now? Quite a lot, Yeah, right? so quite a lot, just by pulling mm. the top there and pulling down here. So if you don't do that, just whilst, we, all that will happen is as you're playing the guitar normally, you're just going to find like every five minutes and you've played a little bit, you're going to go, oh, my guitar's uh, yeah. not in tune anymore. I, honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. No, you, you'll you, sell you, eventually. You can, you can either just spend the first day constantly retuning your guitar, or you can do that stretch thing and it just speeds, speeds up a little bit how quickly your strings will settle in. So we'll try a little bit again, just to give it a bit there. Yeah. Let's give it a bit here. So it's come down a bit in the red bit. Try a little bit again, maybe three times, four times. See, you can once this, all the stretch is yeah. gone, you can kind of see it stops detuning as you. It starts the, so, it starts settling in, and then then you're fine, you know. So that's your basic guitar. Yeah. Again, we're not going into setting intonation or adjusting the neck oh, or no. anything like that. Um, I, I kind of feel like I'm. I would hope that any guitar that you buy from Andertons will, will arrive. It's certainly unlikely to arrive in tune, uh, but it should arrive mm -hmm. with the intonation just about right and the mm -hmm. neck just about right. If you've got an old second-hand guitar or maybe you've bought something from somewhere else, the intonation is, the, uh, is, is a micro-adjustment that you make at this end of the guitar. And what's important about uh, intonation on any uh, stringed, uh, fretted instrument, sorry, is something can be in tune open but then with a chord played further up the neck yeah if the intonation isn't right the guitar won't be in tune so yeah. if you're finding that if you're going hang on a second it's all in tune here but i play a chord up here and it sounds wildly out of tune that's an intonation issue i would take it to somewhere to get set up yeah. or again i was going to point at a video we've done but i don't think we have but no. just in youtube search how to set the intonation of my yeah. guitar and see if, you if you're brave to do yeah, yes just be brave you know there's no you know just yeah why not okay anyway. Last, last bit of the video that mm. I wanted to sort of say um, is how do you plug a pedal in? Mm -hmm. um, lots and lots of people will get given a pedal for Christmas because yeah. pedals are awesome. But yeah. uh, hopefully there's not too much disappointment there because the one thing that you do need to make a pedal work is another guitar lead. And, okay? and often, yes. You need a power supply. Well... Not for all pedals. No, that's true. That's yeah, true. so lots of pedals will have an internal battery that's and that's fine. But yes, a lot of these sort of more affordable mini pedals yeah. like this, there isn't the space inside to put a battery. Yeah. So you will need, yeah, a nine volt power supply. Uh, again, most uh, guitar stores will have a sort of a recommended power supply for their pedals um, and an extra cable. Mm -hmm. So Oz has just rightly shouted out, what's a pedal, Lee? <laughs> um, so you heard two basic sounds when we were playing, maybe three if you include reverb, but you mm -hmm. heard like a clean sound and you heard like an overdrive sound yep. and you heard a little bit of reverb here. Pedals can replicate tons of other kinds of overdrive sounds. So maybe you want to go super death metal, thrash metal, whatever, and, mm -hmm. the, and your amp doesn't have the right kind of distortion in it. Maybe you want a real old school blues sound and it doesn't have the right sound. Uh, plus when you're listening to music and you hear echoes and and modulated kind of sounds you know like sort of wavy sound or wah sounds yes. or all those kinds of different sounds yeah they're all coming from either several individual effects pedals like this linked together or and this again is this is absolutely where i would go if i was looking to add something to this multi-effects so again i'm going to flash up on screen now the veilton gp200 gp200 lt it's our favorite kind of affordable um multi-effects pedal yeah. and within there is everything, everything you need. yeah and as pete was saying yeah. uh video demo up there anyway look blah 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 too much waffling let's plug this in okay so there you absolutely do have to now get this the right way round because oh, yeah. one of the inputs on the you know one of the sockets rather on the pedal is an input and one is an output and if you get that the wrong way around uh, no sound will come out so guitar goes into the input, which is marked as in, nice and easy. Output other side, and then output uh, into the guitar amplifier. 
Um, there's no right or wrong, by the way, with the length of cables. We've got probably unnecessarily long cables for this video, but you <laughs> can use whatever the most appropriate length is. Nine volt into here. Boom. All right. And now again, we've got a, a sound with no distortion, I think. Before I do that, Lee, could you just hand me a pick, please? Oh, I would. Yes. I'm sorry, of course, we should have probably done this earlier in the yeah. video. You don't have to use plectrums no. when you play guitar, but most people do. Yeah, and you get uh, a pack of picks with this starter pack. Anyway, so uh, it's just a, a, you know, a little piece of uh, plastic, whatever, it could be loads of different materials that you can use to strum your strings with. That's yeah, it. and you kind of, again, most players will hold that between their thumb and their first finger in a sort of a, like, a, I don't know, almost like you're about to click your fingers. Type, Tell you type how, I, how I do it. I, I, I'd say like this, take like you hold a neck mm -hmm. in your hand here, right? Mm -hmm. And then hold a neck, put your thumb up, Yeah. put your pick on here, Yeah. put your thumb down. And that's how you, so that's, that's the starting yeah. point. That's you can, I, yeah, a lot that's of people, how I hold mine, but yeah, yeah I but do then you see end up some doing people, all that stuff. Anyway, yeah, yeah, anyway, anyway, right, good shout. Anyway, There's this, no right this or wrong, our, do however you, do you. Uh, this is our sound with no pedal. And then with the pedal. And there are thousands, thousands, <laughs> literally thousands yeah. of pedals that you can buy. And yeah. that's actually probably why I think maybe multi effects is the best way to go at first because multi effects will have a little bit of a flavor of everything in yeah. it. Yeah, and you can um, choose what you want from that. So that's it. All that is left for you to do now is practice furiously. Yeah. There's um, no magic potions or... Isn't there? There's no, Don't there's, we sell there's, a magic there's potion? There's no easy way for me to be here, Lee. <laughs> yes. Just repetition, repetition. Practice, yes. practice, practice. Yes, do. Play the music you want. Well. It's yeah. the best thing that Pete and I ever did uh, in our misspent childhoods <laughs> was pick up one of these and yeah. put a bit of time into to, to learn how to play it. Yeah. Uh, and I think even now, you, you know, doesn't matter whether you grew yeah, up when we grew up or you're grown up now, it's still just a beautiful, the best thing ever. beautiful instrument um, and tons and tons of fun. Yeah. So that's it. Um, please do like and subscribe to this channel. We are here pretty much every day talking about guitar gear or interviewing guitar celebrities. Yes. Um, and we uh, have fun. You know, hopefully you'll find that informative too. But that's it. Yes. Enjoy. Thank you. See you next time.